The best baseball card from 1961 is shrouded in mystery. The 1961 season was a historic one for several reasons. First, the Los Angeles Angels and the Washington Senators joined the American League, bringing the total number of Major League teams to 18. At the same time, Major League Baseball expanded each team schedule from 154 games per year to 162. That decision, of course, immediately led to controversy. 61 asterisk. As Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle slammed baseball after baseball into the nether regions of old Yankee Stadium, Commissioner Ford Frick decreed that, in order to break Babe Ruth's single-season record of 60 home runs set in 1927, either man would have to smack 61 by the end of the New York Yankees' 154th game of the season. As the summer wore on, Mantle wore down and his pace fell off. Maris stayed in the lineup, but he couldn't quite match the Babe's pace and recorded dinger number 61 in the Yanks' 163rd game of the season, an early season game had been suspended. The result was a new home run record that came along with the most famous asterisk in history. You might think with all the monumental happenings from the 1961 season that the card of a then current player would be my choice as the greatest baseball card issued that year, but you'd be wrong. Ever heard of the 1918 Black Clubs? The best baseball card issued in 1961 was the Hippo Vaughn pasteboard issued by Fleer. Here are just a few reasons why. Fleer was flicking boogers at Topps. For nearly a decade, Topps had enjoyed a virtual monopoly in the baseball card arena by virtue of their exclusive contracts with current players. But Fleer was intent on nibbling away at the edges. First, they snatched Ted Williams away from the old gun company in 1959 and issued what was essentially the forerunner to the Star Company set of the 1980s. Then in 1960, Fleer returned with a 79-card set of retired or dead players who represented the best the game had ever offered. In 1961, the upstart was back with more greats, 154 cards in all, and several multiplayer cards. Fleer was serving notice that they intended to stick around, and you have to imagine that Topps was annoyed, if not a bit nervous. Hippo Vaughn has a historical tie to the Cincinnati Reds. We're Reds homers around here, and any player who stitches his name to the historic fabric of our team is worthy of a closer look. The back of Vaughn's 1961 Fleer card lays a compelling tale of an epic battle that the Chicago Cubs pitcher once waged with the Reds' great, Fred Tony. So Vaughn lost his no-hit bid to Fred Tony, while Tony completed his 10-inning beauty against the Cubs. Tony wins. Reds win. This card wins. Hippo Vaughn was a member of the Cubs team who may have thrown the 1918 World Series. Okay, so this one is no sure thing, but it's so intriguing that it deserves to be dusted off every few years. We all know that members of the 1919 Chicago White Sox took money to throw that year's World Series to the Cincinnati Reds. It was a scandal that nearly wrecked the game, helped create a strong and heavy-handed commissioner's office, and likely led to the live ball era as Major League Baseball sought to bring fans back to the ballpark after the dust settled and cleared from the Black Sox debacle. But did you know that the 1919 White Sox may have just been following in the footsteps of their Windy City predecessors? The 1920 court deposition from one of the disgraced White Sox, pitcher Ed Seacott, hinted that the Chai Sox had taken their cue from the Cubs the year before. Seacott was talking about a conversation players had on a long trade ride from Chicago to the East Coast when the discussion understandably turned to how underpaid the group was. And the idea makes some sense, because players actually took a pay cut in 1918, and were looking at paltry World Series shares. In fact, the Cubs and the Boston Red Sox refused to take the field before Game 5 of the 18 series for just that reason. In addition, there seemed to have been some funky plays during the series, including Cubs runners being picked off bases they had no business being picked off, and Cub fielders dropping cans of corn. So did the Cubs really throw the 1918 World Series? Well, we'll probably never know for sure, since the records are scarce and everyone involved is long dead. But it sure is intriguing to think about, and it makes you look at relics of the era in a different light. As for Hippo Vaughn himself, there's no indication at all that he was involved in rigging the series, even if that did occur.
But he was there, and he played with those Cubs and against those Red Sox, and he knew the White Sox and the Red players who came into glare scrutiny in 1919. And there he is in the 1961 Fleer set for us to have, hold, and behold. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel, waxpackgods.com.